Hi, I'm Pastor Richard Demsick. I'm Kate Demsick. And this is Foolish Faith, the show where we talk about the wonderful things and the terrible things of Christian culture. Welcome to Foolish Faith. For this week's topic, Sin Boldly. Have you ever had a problem? Something that you didn't want to do? But what? No, I'm just listening to you. Oh, okay. Well, you were looking so intently. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not used to you paying attention to what I'm saying. This is the first. Yeah, sure. Have you ever had a problem? Something that you knew you shouldn't do, but you wanted to do? Well, there's a solution for that. Do it. Do it! There's a man who said, don't just sin, sin as loud as you can, and as often. Hmm. Can you increase grace by sinning? By all means. And who are we talking about here? Martin Luther. <laughs> now, for those of you who don't know, Martin Luther was a civil rights leader who was in the 1960s. Uh, he, he took Rosa Parks off the bus. Okay. <laughs> And uh, then he walked down, what? He took Rosa Parks <laughs> off the bus. What are you even... That's what he did. He took all the, all the African Americans off the bus in that time took period. all of them. Yeah. He said, no, you oh. walk to work. And he made sure that they all walked to work. And eventually, it led to equal rights. Martin? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? The same. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the march. <laughs> That's, of course, what most people think of is Martin Luther. When you, I do remember the first time you were talking about Martin Luther and these things that he said and did, I was like, huh. <laughs> like, I can't picture it. I didn't know that. Like, I always just, you know, I go to the, like, I had a dream yeah. speech and, you know, the equality. And, jail, yeah. You know, that's, that's right. what my brain goes to, but this is not, this is not King Jr. Martin Luther King Jr. This is just Martin Luther. This is just Martin Luther. And was Martin Luther King Jr. named after Martin Luther? I think so. But I, well, I'm, I feel uh, like he was a very different I'm man. sure he's named after Martin Luther King because his name is Junior. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> it's just they just skipped the senior. There's no. They senior. went straight to Junior. I've never heard anything about the senior. I've studied a lot really. about Martin Luther King Jr. Poor senior gets passed over. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure he was proud. I hope he was a good guy. I'm sure he was. You never proud. know. Sometimes people have like really bad fathers, and that motivates them to like create a lot of justice. In the true, world. but that's not what we're talking. No, about. it's not at all. Martin Luther was a uh, he was a monk, and he was in love with the Catholic. In, in love with the Catholic. And he was in love with a Catholic? I should have said in love... Well, he ended up uh, falling in love with a Catholic nun. But that's another story. <laughs> um, he is... He was a Catholic and he f was in love with the Catholic faith. Okay. He loved the Catholic Church. Now, at this time, it's important to note that pretty much if you were Christian, you were Catholic. Right. All right? There was no non-Catholic Christians. Yeah. Catholic, okay. we talked about last week, means universal. And... The Pope was the head man, and he loved the Pope. He actually said at that point in his life, he would have killed if uh, he would have killed for the Pope. Yeah. So the Pope said, hey, I've got, a, I've got an offer. Why is the Pope turning into... Well, he was Italian. The Godfather. So, never go against the, the family. That's the worst Marlon Brando impression that I've ever heard. I just That's heard okay. It out of my That's mind. all right. I'm like, that is so bad. But so Martin Luther would have done anything. He would have done anything... I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. Before Martin Luther King Jr. made it cool to be Martin Luther, Martin Luther was chilling with a beer, singing beer songs to Christian music, and throwing poop at Jewish kids. Oh, God. <laughs> and that is who we're talking about today. And he actually did that. I just found about... I, Richard wanted to talk about Martin Luther, and I was like, I don't really know that much about him. Sounds boring. No thanks. Richard, all he had to do was tell me that he, the guy actually threw poop at Jewish children. And I was like, yeah, sure, let's talk about him. I don't <laughs> That's care. enough for you. That's enough for me. Why did he do that? Um, well, have you ever seen... Whose poop was it? Well, was I don't it, know. It could have been his poop. His own? Like he 
popped a squat. <laughs> just like, just uh, like a monkey, just straight up like a monkey. Was it like yeah, he was the, animal poop or well, did he have to get it from somebody? I will say, okay, so a little disclaimer. We don't really know. There's debates okay. about it. So it's very possible it's too late that this to do was, forensics. It's it's possible that yeah, exactly. Like we can't find the poop. Yeah. It's not fossilized like <laughs> it is in Jurassic Park, you know, there's no mosquito that you know okay. <laughs> that, that sucked the poop. <laughs> and then I don't think, I don't think mosquitoes land on poop to flies, whatever. To eat anyway. The point is, um most Lutherans believe that a lot of the things that are the negative things said about Martin Luther were written by people that didn't like Martin Luther because they were it's trying like to discredit him. Propaganda type yeah, that so this some of this stuff could be propaganda, but we also have a lot of his quotes that talk a lot about poop. And he seemed kind of crazy. And he did seem kind of crazy. He seemed like the type of guy that would actually throw poop. Especially when he got old. So this is this is old Martin. This Luther is old, Luther yeah. Poop. So there's because you said that there's two. There's young Martin Luther and there's old Martin Luther. That's right. And young Martin Luther seems to me, uh, from the little bit I know, like he's like he was this bold leader of the Christian faith. Did a lot of stuff. Got a lot accomplished. Whereas old Martin Luther is kind of like. Your weird grandpa that like maybe has Alzheimer's and you don't really want to bring him to the Christmas party because yeah. you might throw poop at someone. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> you're gonna have to you call could the cops. Not, I couldn't have said it be better. A whole thing. Yeah, that's you know it's like he's out in somebody else's car yeah. and you know starts a fight with some. He's like naked snapper. on the neighbor's front lawn. Yeah, that's pretty. Things much. are happening. <laughs> that's Luther in the old age. All right. Maybe a little unfair to Luther, but he 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 started to when he got older hate the Pope. He hated. We kind of hated the Pope a little earlier too. Mm-hmm. It kind of was a transition. His hatred for the Pope came quicker. His hatred for Satan, which you know, of course. Well, his yeah, hatred for Satan was probably probably from the beginning. His, yeah. his whole but he started life. saying some crazy things about it. Like one of the advice that he gave of warding off demons. Can't even farting. Worked for his friends. He thought might as well work for demons. Did he actually too. like that? Was a real thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, uh, well, we do what know was that the logic we do that? know that he said if you want to ward off a demon, fart um, because the smell it's pungent. Okay. <laughs> why Whatever. Would, why would the demon want to be around him? Uh, then the last thing is that he, he did start to hate Jewish people at a certain point. That came later. We're not so cool with that one. <laughs> he used to love Jewish people, and he talked about how great they were and how to you know share the love of Jesus in a compassionate way with them. But I don't know what happened. Like all of a sudden, he just, he just got old and kind of crazy. Yeah. But it's really important to note. Let's talk about the let's good talk about young, young Luther. Young Luther. Yeah, young love that. young Martin Luther. And bef- bef- for those of you who are Lutheran that are listening, I was born and raised uh, Lutheran, and I have – he's one of the characters in history that I respect most, actually, okay. because he read the Bible. Martin Luther King Jr. is uh, your other one, isn't he? Yeah, I like – I just really like the name Martin Luther. Mm-hmm. It's really the thing. Um, but he read the Bible and then realized that what the Catholic Church was doing was wrong. Okay. And – he wanted so much to bring about change and he fought hard even to almost dying because of it. They were going to kill him and he stayed true. The, the movie Luther is actually one of the good uh, Christian movies if you want to know more about Martin Did Luther and don't like reading, which is, you know, most of us, let's be honest. One of Martin Luther's things that he did was to stop the church, the Catholic church from selling indulgences. Okay. Indulgences, chocolates. Yeah, Ghirardelli indulgence is what well, people people used to eat chocolate and and just gorge Nutella. themselves. Nutella. Yeah, and it wasn't healthy. And, and Martin Luther stopped that. Good job, Martin Luther. You know, what indulgences actually were? If someone you knew wasn't a Christian, okay, and you knew they were going to hell forever, okay, but you didn't want to talk to them about Jesus, right? You could wait till they die and then pay for them to get in. Sounds like a winner. Yeah. So you pay. How? What? How is that possible? You give money to the Catholic Church and they say, of course. And then, you know, poof. 
They get sucked it's just out magic. of hell into heaven. It's just magic. It's actually, yeah. I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating things, making it a little unfair. But... I mean, I don't want to go as far to say, like, I wish that that was true because I don't really wish that that was true. But, I mean, that would be nice. Yeah, just like, ah, right, you, you want to go to hell? So much Too easier. bad. I'm going to pay money to the Catholic Church and you're going to heaven. It would be so much easier because then you could, like, then you could really just do whatever you wanted with your life as long as you knew that you had someone that was going to pay your way in heaven. This would be a terrible world. This would be the most horrendous. If Kate ruled the world. Awful watch planet. Out. If that was actually a thing. No. <laughs> so and, never mind. And the, to be fair, I think you actually could only pay for people in limbo or uh, what's the other one? Purgatory. Yeah. Um, but uh, we're not going to get into on, all no. those Moving stuff. On. Maybe some other time. But today we just want to talk about one of Luther's main thing. Oh, and I do want to mention the Catholic Church later changed these things. Yeah, they yeah, they're not these, still. They don't still wrong. believe that. Yeah. Um, but uh, Luther was had a lot of great ideas and did a lot of great things for the Christian Church. And one of the famous quotes from Martin Luther was "Sin boldly." Right. And what exactly was he meaning? But what is the meaning behind "sin boldly"? Well, the full quote is sin boldly, but love God bolder still. Okay, that completes it for sure. And the best way to describe it is to say, like, don't worry about the little things that you're getting wrong. Worry about the big things that you should be trying to get right. I would say that that would be at least my definition of sin boldly, but love God bolder still. Like, focus on loving God and loving your neighbor and... With your... And it'll kind of fall into place if you're doing those things. But the sin boldly part, we're thinking is kind of like, you know, we are human. We do sin. It Be does honest. happen. Be honest about it. Don't keep it hidden, you know, swept under the rug. Yeah. Luther was a bold guy about everything. So he just thought we should be just as bold about the things we get wrong. Have you ever met those people, by the way, that like... When you even when you first meet them, they will tell you everything that isn't great about them. Yeah, like I, they're the people that I respect and trust. Yeah, because well, they're anyone. not they're not showboating. They're not trying to like you know make themselves seem super awesome and great. And it kind of well, it's it's nice because then the more you get to know them, the more you you get to discover what's great about them and the things that they're good at. And there was an and that's awesome really cool. there was an awesome Seinfeld episode where um, George Costanza decided that he was going to do the opposite thing of whatever his natural <laughs> instinct was because basically all his instincts were wrong. Right. <laughs> So he's he's flirting with this girl and he just goes up and says like everything bad about him like yeah and and it works. Well, here's your chance to try the opposite. Instead of tuna salad and being intimidated by women, chicken salad and going right up to him. Yeah, I should do the opposite. I should. If every instinct you have is wrong, then the opposite would have to be right. <laughs> yes, I will do the opposite. I used to sit here and do nothing and regret it for the rest of the day. So now I will do the opposite and I will do something. Excuse me, uh, I couldn't help but notice that you were looking in my direction. (laughs) Oh, yes, I was. You just ordered the same exact lunch as me. (laughs) My name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. Victoria, hi. <laughs> uh, but I feel like that's kind of the approach. And I kind of did that a little bit in dating. Not to the George Costanza level, but when I was dating, remember, I'd always say, I, I'm going to treat you worse when I, when we first start dating. Yeah, you did say that. Yeah. I don't know how true that was. You think I treat you less good now than I did when we first dated? No, I mean I think that you are who you are. I think you, I think you treated me nice then, and you treat me nice now. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. But I, my main point at the time was like I'm gonna be honest and upfront about yeah. my flaws and my weaknesses, and I think I pretty much was. I yeah. told you, I told you I was stubborn. And... Yeah, no, I did too. I did as well. Yeah, that, well, that's true. It's, it's hard hiding it for us. Yeah, I mean, that was kind of my mom's main prayer request in my life was that I would find a stubborn man that could put up with me. Happy to help out, Lori. So. Yeah. But but sinning boldly, going back to that, 
Um, yeah, I think I think obviously the second half of that statement of you know, is it love God Boulder? The love God Boulder still Boulder still. Um, I mean because that is what completes it and makes it um, a, a thing. Yeah, it's pretty horrific if people just sin boldly yeah, and don't love not, God. It's not. If Boulder. that's the end, if that's the period, it's not. That's it's not quite enough. And and it is important to note in this like the. The downside of where you could take this. You could take it to a place. That isn't healthy. Where you just allow yourself to like, oh, well, Martin Luther said I can do whatever I want. Yeah, it kind of happened in the Holocaust. Because I still love God, which we don't want to relive that. No. Um, now, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who is a Lutheran pastor, kind of corrected people's understanding of Luther and talked that it's not about cheap grace, but costly grace. Mm-hmm. Now, for the those of you who don't know. The greater amount of grace you need. Well, and one of the things that I think I, I just want to un- explain really quick is the Christian understanding of what grace is. Okay. And there's a, yeah, a kind of a cheesy little acronym for this is like God's riches at Christ's expense, which is, you know. God's like, riches at Christ's expense. Okay. Okay. But the idea of grace is like God covering over are wrong. So like mm-hmm. we couldn't do it on our own. Jesus died and covered it up. And so now we can live in him. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, you have this massive debt to pay and you couldn't. So, you know, somebody came and just like paid it for you and they were like, here you go. You don't have to go to jail. Yeah. And go Luther felt like we should focus on the huge amount of debt that we have to pay, that we should have to pay, mm-hmm. and the fact that we don't, that we don't and live in that, live yeah. in that, rejoice in that, instead of focusing on trying to reduce the debt from this huge amount to what the best anyone could do, which is just slightly less. Mm-hmm. So obviously, this does not mean that you can just do whatever you want. Right. So if you, for instance, kind of hate someone. Mm-hmm. Sinning boldly doesn't mean that you get you just to... Just go chop their head off. Yeah, like actually kill them. You're like, oh, Martin Luther said it was okay. It's like the same sin, just a more extreme version of it. No, I think when it's more like... I think it's good to have that image in your head because, you know, when people first start going to church, when they first start considering becoming a Christian and believing in everything that goes with it, I think a lot of times there's this... Uh, misconception that life is going to be grand and wonderful and better and magic and roses everywhere. And it's just not the case because, you know, life still can be just (laughs) terrible, awful, awful. And we still have problems, we still have issues. Um, But the idea of believing in Jesus, believing in God is that, you know, it's okay. I mean, there's, there's, there's bad, but there's more good because, God makes things good. Jesus made things good. We had that debt. Mm -hmm. We don't have to pay it now. And, you know, getting through the day is a lot easier because you know that God forgives you. You know that Jesus paid that debt. And you know that it's all kind of going to be worth it in the end, even though life might suck here. Yeah. Eventually, it will be better because you'll make it to heaven and you don't have to deal with that crap anymore. One of the things that I've often heard from a lot of atheists is they'll say, oh, Christians think that they're better than other people. And sometimes that might be true. Oh, yeah. But but, But, I mean, there's just people that think they're better than other people. Yeah, people are just ridiculous. I mean, that's Christianity actually, I think, is the the hardest religion to have that perspective. You have to be yeah. so unbiblical to have that perspective. Yeah. One of the things I, ex- I, I guess I'd explain it this way. Okay. So if, if I was born into a family where I had an abusive father mm-hmm. who hated me and, and beat me and, and told me I was horrible, mm-hmm. right. That doesn't make me uh, a better or worse person mm-hmm. to having that happen. Mm-hmm. Right. I didn't do anything to have that. happen. I just happened to be born right. in a family and I had a really bad dad um, but it would be make my life harder. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it'd be challenging. If I was then born into a different family, same guy, but born to a family where I had a loving dad who who looked out for me, who was always trying to teach me, was always gonna guide me, always loved me, always mm-hmm. a grace for me, right? Still doesn't make me a better person. No. Just makes my life a little bit easier. A little bit nicer and yeah. yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't make my life easy because there's still gonna be other forces, other influences. Yeah. I don't know. That's just kind of my analogy for like having God be your savior and being a Christian just means you've got a loving father. Right. It it doesn't mean that you're a better person. Exactly. It doesn't mean that you're a better person. It doesn't mean your life's going to be easier. It just means there's kind of this, 
there's this catch that it's not all bad. It's not, not everything is terrible. You do have that ray of hope. And, and you just have someone to lean on. Yeah. You know, it's just like, it's the same life that other people are living and you're just as messed up as other people are living. But now you have someone to lean on and someone to go to for direction. Right. So anyway, that's that's where I am. And, you know, my thing is, and I've talked about it before, but we should focus on the two great commandments that Jesus said, which is loving God and loving your neighbor. You master those, mm -hmm. then you can start getting into specifics. Yeah. But I haven't met anyone who mastered those yet. So uh, in the meantime, what do you guys think? Sin boldly, love God or bolder still. Is this a good you know, is this a good statement? Life. Is this a good mantra to live under? And do we think, I mean, do you think our description was accurate? I yeah. mean, we're kind of being extreme in our language here, but that's, hey, that's Martin Luther. Uh, Obviously. <laughs> and do you think we were being fair to Martin Luther? Do you think Martin Luther had a good effect or Do you bad? think we should start throwing poop? Yeah. Should we throw poop? At people. At, you know, demons to get them away or something. Or the Pope. Or oh, not this pope. Not this pope at not least. This, Mar that's one thing I will leave us on. Martin Luther would love, and I can say this yeah. with like all certainty because I knew Martin Luther's writings very, very well, um, and I know this pope pretty well. Martin Luther would love this pope, and he would never have felt to love him. like yeah, he had this. Well, do I don't think Luther would have um, would have started a new. A new like a revolution church against him. If the Catholic Church was in the state that it is today, I think you're right. Yeah, this would be an it's a very question. different Catholic Church now. And yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I doubt he would. He wouldn't be the same person today. Obviously. Yeah. His surroundings. Would I be think that, I would different. love to hear people's opinion on that. Like, the, would Luther reform the modern day church, the modern day Catholic Church? Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe. We like subscribers. That makes us feel good. It's a good, it's a good feeling. Yeah. <laughs> hey, baby, how about a little tongue action, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, stick your tongue down his throat. <laughs> what are we going to do? Should we just move? <laughs> it won't be necessary. <laughs> <laughs> Shut your traps and stop kicking the seats! We're trying to watch the movie! And if I have to tell you again, we're going to take it outside and I'm going to show you what it's like. You understand me? <laughs> now shut your mouths or I'll shut them for you. And if you think I'm kidding, just try me. Try me. Because I would love it. <laughs>